This is a reading from the Notebooks by Maria Voltorta, 1943, October the 7th. Jesus says, O you that cry because separation, footnote, the death of her mother, to which the passages and dictations of October 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 9th refer, is painful for you and seems complete. Consider what Jesus is saying to you, and you will see that this separation is not complete and that the pain diminishes. My apostle, footnote, the writer adds at the foot of the page in pencil, St. Paul, first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 16 and 17, utters inspired words to which a meaning connected exclusively, exclusively with those living on earth is usually attributed, but it has a broader and deeper meaning which I shall reveal for all of you, children who weep, for all of you in pain, who suffer over the death of a loved one. Didn't he or she who died feed on my blood and the flesh which became bread for men? And if they fed on it, doesn't the power of the blood and the flesh of your Savior remain in them even beyond death? And what can human death do as compared to the superhuman spirit? Does the little death perhaps have the power to separate parts of my members from me, who live eternally, just because they died on earth? And don't you live in me, constituting that part of my mystical body which lives on earth? Aren't these incontrovertible truths? Yes, they are. No, no, all of you that weep over the pain of a recent loss, that the one you weep for is not dead, but lives in me. Know that the very same bread which fed your souls while you were together on earth maintains life and communion between your spirits living here below and the transhumanized living in me. The little death can do no harm to the immortal spirits. The great death is the one to be feared, the one that really takes a relative of yours, a spouse or a friend, away from you eternally. The great death, that is, the damnation of the soul, which really separates from me cells of my mystical body that have fallen prey to the gangrenes of Satan. But for those who died in my name and have nourished in themselves the life of the Spirit with the Eucharistic food, which does not perish and which always preserves from eternal death, no, for them there is nothing to weep over but reason to rejoice, for they have emerged from the danger of death to enter into life. Consider, all of you, consider that it is quite hard for someone who has fed on me to be a brother of Judas, like the one for whom my bread was not life, but death. According to their capacity for a spiritual assimilation, my bread, that is, myself, made into food to give men the strength to conquer heaven and the currency to enter it, will give them a more or less prompt entry into the kingdom of glory. But in 99% of cases, it always gives the salvation of the soul. Do not weep, then, parents left without children, spouses left without your consorts, orphans left without parents. Do not weep. As to the mother in the gospel, I, who never lie, say to you, do not weep. Believe in me. I will give you back the being that you love, and I will give that being back to you in a kingdom where the sad death of earth has no access, and where the horrible death of the spirit is no longer possible. Do not weep. Upon all of you, May this hope which is faith descend and my blessing.